I'll start with some trivia. According to John Eulsley, the bass player of the band, this song was written by Mark, of course, in one single drive from whatever gallery it was to the flat where the guy stayed at the time. Obviously, visiting the gallery was insanely frustrating for them all, judging by the lyrics alone. And this frustration shines through the words and this kind of aggressive, pulsing arrangement. And so Mark got inspiration out of let's put it on a table here, some shitty exhibition, which happens all the time and will continue to happen, but as always Mark turned the negative situation into something positive, which is all of his song is all about, from Sultans on Swing to Heart of Folk and from Money for Nothing to The Rack Picker's Dream. Nearly every his song do exactly that, turning the shitty situation in, into a song which will stand the test of time turning dire straits situation into something positive. The song has loads of tasty solos in the studio version and life is just ridiculous. There are truck loads of flicks to steal and since teaching solos isn't my thing at all, luckily there are people who can do this work, namely one of my favorite YouTubers, George Turner, has a really cool video in the gallery solo. Although he's wrong about Capo on the first fret, it's a cool watch indeed because He's way more educated and musically advanced than me, anyway. Speaking of Capo, it's well known that the song was played in A minor and speeded up later on, making it almost, almost B flat minor. I'll put a link on a great research by Ingo Raven from mkguitar.com in the description. Check it out. You can even listen to the song in its original form there, which is slower and darker. Personally, I'm not a fan of speeding or slowing recordings, and I absolutely love the remastered version of the 1967 The Doors debut album, which was famously and accidentally mastered slower than it was recorded, and I think it's one of the best remasters in the history of music. And also I prefer when I'm 64 in C major, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm sorry for a long introduction, but I had to say it all because before the actual lesson. The heart of the song is this bouncy, groovy, tasty style, almost like a reggae, laid back, cool, funky, finger style riff in A minor. It takes up almost the whole body of the song, except for the chorus. And the chorus is extremely easy to play, whereas the riff is pretty hard to play and to explain and to recreate. There are numbers way to approach it. What I like to do is to play it in the fifth position with an open A string and this bar shape which looks like like an A minus seven shape. But the trick is to play only top two strings while these two are blocked. Fourth string can be blocked with the fourth finger, but but the first string it's sort of halfway blocked, leaving this harmonic here. But 
can also block it too. Or don't block nothing at all. So there are some options already. Also using the fourth finger is extremely convenient because it's easy to grip D after this A minor shape. And also it's easy to go to the chorus. The left hand little finger has a big role in this song indeed. It's an unusual way to play it, but it works, especially with this right hand plucking. To learn it quickly, I recommend playing something like that with muted strings. Thumb, up, down, up. Then on the down and up move, add two short left hand chords. This is the backbone of this riff. And again, you have a choice. A finger strumming or this three finger strumming. Which I prefer. This riff is a two-part riff and here is the first rhythmic, rhythmic pattern slowly. I'll use the three fingers method mostly. Which is thumb up down stroke, thumb up down stroke. This is how it sounds without left hand muting. Second part is thumb up down up uh, thumb up down two D's C D and C full riff with no muting. Percussive flicks, <coughs> riff like, like that, you can even practice without a guitar. It's like playing drums. So I think you can pick out the character of this riff already. And of course there is another option, extend the second part and, and play only that. Also this slide is really important. and it gives so much class to the first few bars. You play it and go... Ah. Ah. Like in the chorus. The chorus, as I said, is pretty easy and... 
it is quick A minor to G, then C, G, and triads. Mark loves triads. F up here, and two C triads. Then the same exact thing in G. On the original, of course, it's up here. But I can play it just for now. Then a little G to C move here and C to D slide with a slight vibrato. Also in the verses there's these little beautiful turnarounds made of simple shapes. A minor, C, D, G. Or the second turnaround. minor, C, G with B in the bass, A minor. The main rule is that these two just alternate. One time it's four chords, then it's three chords. Like short one, long one, short one, long one. The intro is even more straightforward. This is a melody in sixth in C major. And there's two things to pay attention to. Second finger, which stays on the neck for the whole intro and and sort of slide around freely to get the silky smooth sound. Second thing is the order of strings to play. Like here, the first note First note is the bass, but here it's the melody on top. The same thing later on here. Bass, melody, and this is it. Pretty self explanatory intro. Bottom line, the whole first Die Straits album is full of songs that are remarkably hard to play, despite the fact that, for the most part, it's three five chord songs with repetitive sections and clear structure. The most difficult part is the singing, because there is so much character in it. That's why I'm more leaned toward more recent Mark songs, because as the year, years go by, his song is more about the music and the characters in the song rather than about himself, which I love. And even when he plays his first songs 10, 15, 25 years later, he gives them his new, less character feel. Thanks for watching.